going to show you how you can group things together in OBS. So for example, your webcam and your webcam border, so you can drag them at the same time, but also can add them to multiple scenes at the same time, so you don't have to add everything individually. Before I begin, I want to thank our sponsor, Own.pro. On Own.pro, you can get awesome overlay packs that you can use in your OBS. For your starting soon screen, your be right back screen, your gameplay scene, your intermission screen, and your camera scene. You want your stream to look professional, right? Own.pro has your back. And besides for having overlays, they also offer music. This makes sure that you will never get any DMCA strikes. And you know what the coolest thing is? With the code TREE, you will get 50% off. Link is down below in the description. So there's two ways of grouping things together in OBS. One is nested scenes and one is groups. Let's start out with groups. So this is a clean OBS. Besides from the fact that I have a lot of sources in here that I don't really use. <laughs> so we're going to make a new source. And there's a source here that's called group. This is a group and we can call the group whatever we want. For example, audio. Now we have an empty map. It's kind of like in File Explorer where you have a map with files in it. But this time you have a source with source in it. A map source. Now we're going to click on plus and we're going to add some things. For example, audio output device, desktop, audio. And we could select the desktop audio, for example, your headphones. Then we can also click on a plus and add a microphone, mic. I'm going to add my microphone and click on OK. Now, as you see, these things appear above the group. What we can do is we can drag them in the group like this. V. We can see that they're in the group by clicking on the arrow here. Now we can turn all these things off or on by clicking on the eye or individually turning them off and on. What we can also do is start with the files. We click on a plus and for example, add an image. I'm gonna just browse for an image here real quick. There we go, let's see that. <laughs> and let's add something else, a camera maybe. Let's add the Ocado cam here and click on okay. So now we have this image, which we're going to drag on top so we can actually see it. <laughs> and we want it to be like in this corner here. This is the place we always want it to be in. What we're going to do is we're going to shift click on these both, right click and then click on group selected items. Now these two are grouped together. Again, we can see that by clicking on the arrow at the group. And we can rename the group by right clicking and click on rename webcam. Okay, now, if you don't want to move any of these items, you can lock the group. But even if these images are not locked, they're still locked. So if you lock a group, everything in that group is locked. If I unlock the group, we can also lock the image, but we can still move it because we unlocked the group. We can click on the webcam like this and then use the webcam. If you want to move the webcam, but not want to move the image, we lock the image. Then we click on the webcam only, and then we can move the webcam. If we lock them both, we cannot move any of them. And if we lock the group, we can also not move any of them, even though they're unlocked. You can always give these group a color by right clicking, set color and setting a color here. I would recommend giving all the things inside the group the same color. And this makes it clear that this is all belongs to the webcam tab. If you run out of colors here, you can also do custom color. So now we can click on the webcam one and we can drag it around and we can make it smaller. But the uh, TDAT here will always stay in place. Okay, what if we make a new scene now? We can click on the add and we can still add group. And as we see, the groups that we just made have appeared in here. And if we click on add existing and click on webcam, the same group will reappear. Why is this something that you want to use? For a webcam, for example, if you want to keep adding your webcam and you have the overlay and stuff in it, you can add it in one go like this. But also, like one of the groups we made was for audio. So if you have sound alerts, your microphone and your desktop audio in one group, you can immediately add them like this to another scene that, it, that you just made. Things that I would recommend grouping are alerts, sound effects, webcams with webcam borders and other audio things because those things you often need together. Okay, so like I said, there are two ways of doing this. The second way is actually nesting scenes. What does this mean? Okay, let's say we're gonna delete everything out of this group. Remove, remove. What we can still do is get everything from scene nine, which is the webcam and the audio, we can get that into scene 10 here. What we can do is click on plus and click on scene. We can add an existing one at scene nine, that's the scene, 
I click on OK. Now what we see is that everything f that we set up in scene 9 here is being copied to scene 10. However, like you see, it is locked together. It's all locked together. We cannot move any of these individual things. We can stretch it out back so it will fill the screen. There we go. But it will be locked together. That is because we, we have black spaces around here. It made black spaces around here too. As you see, the red border ends later than where this frame ends. The upside of nesting scenes like this is you can apply filters on a scene and it doesn't have to apply on the source itself. So for example, I want my webcam to be like a round circle in one of the scenes, but I do not want that in another scene. Normally, if you put a filter on the webcam, it will change in all the scenes. However, if you do a little trick and uh, we have here camera round, as you can see, I don't have my camera on it because I'm filming it with it right now. But this is where my camera normally comes. This is the camera around and this is the camera full. And this is full. You will see the whole camera in here. However, this is the same source. So what I did is here you see camera, camera link raw. Here I put in my camera. This is a scene with raw, with the actual source in it. Then we make cam link not in use. We basically click on plus add scene and we add cam link raw to it. So this scene is only completing cam link raw. There's no filter on this screen. Even though it is round, there's no filter on it. And then we have cam link mask. And cam link mask is basically copying cam link not in use. Because normally if you put a filter on a scene, it will change the actual scene as well for some reason. So here we have cam link mask we have put the filter on here that it is like a circle. If we remove this, it's not a circle anymore. So this makes it a circle. However, because it changes the original source, not in use, it changes this one too. However, there's no filter on this one, so the camera raw will stay the same. Therefore, we can use the camera mask one for the scenes where we want it to be masked and the raw one for the scenes that we want the full camera to be displayed in. So that's a definite upside of using the scenes the nested scenes instead of the groups. However, you cannot move anything and don't have control over the scene anymore because it's only in the other scene. You're literally copying another scene, that's everything you do. I know that setting up LBS can be super intimidating and maybe all the talk about scenes and sources was already a little bit too much for you. I have made a whole video about how scenes work in OBS, so I definitely recommend checking that one out. I'll see you there.